Hi, welcome to Muzzles First. Today I got a really cool little gun to show you. This right here is the Kimber Solo Carry. This is a small pocket size 9mm. Um, and I believe that's what it's going to be used for. This actually does not belong to me. This belongs to a friend of mine. And he happens to be left handed, which is one of the reasons he chose this Kimber Solo. Because you'll notice the controls on this are ambi, both for the magazine release and for the safety, the frame safety, both of them. So the frame safety is just like a 1911, takedown pin just like a 1911 on this. It's really similar to a mini, just a miniature 1911. The internals are, are completely different though. And we'll take a quick look at that for a minute here. Um, the height on this is 3.9 inches and the way Kimber measures that is from the butt of the gun to the top of the frame at a 90 degree angle. So not at the direction of the, of the grip, but straight up and down. All right, so length on this from the heel of the gun to the end of the muzzle is 5.5 inches and it weighs 17 ounces. So it's kind of a heavy little gun, but it's a solid stainless steel slide, aluminum alloy frame, and the internals are all stainless. It's a pretty cool little gun. Um, the matte finish on here, this is a black matte, and Kimber calls this a Kim Pro 2 finish. It's a pretty smooth little finish. I'm not sure how durable it is, but it's a very nice looking finish, very attractive finish. All right, the um, barrel length is 2.7 inches. Um, once again, made of stainless steel. The sights on it are a three dot sight. They are a standard Novak style sight, although I doubt they're made by Novak. There actually seems to be somebody's initials inside the HW maybe. I don't know if we can get a picture of that or not. I don't know if that's going to come out clear enough to see or not. Um, I'm not sure who makes the sights, but the sights are dovetailed in there. So I would assume either uh, Kimber or someone will make uh, replacement sights for this. Possibly night sights, because I know there's a lot of people that do not like the uh, standard Novak style sights. Um, this is double action only, and is striker fired. All right, so I'll tell you what. Um, let's take it apart and look at it. Um, by the way, the, the trigger pull on this is uh, six and a half to seven and a half pounds. That's per Kimber's website. I do not have a trigger pull gauge to test this, but let's verify that it's empty. Nothing in the magazine, nothing in the chamber. All right, so the first thing you see about this trigger, there's no slop in this. I mean, you have tension on the trigger from the very get go. And it, a little bit of tension here, then you kind of hit a wall, and this goes right through. All right, about six and a half, seven and a half pounds. It's a pretty nice trigger, actually. It's not uh, not that bad of a trigger at all. I kind of like it. All right, magazine, stainless magazines. There are only a six round magazine, plus one in the chamber. Um, you do have an external extractor. You do also have a little uh, pinhole here as a chamber loaded indicator so you can actually see the, the brass through the little hole here. I'll tell you what, let's uh, let's compare it to a couple other guns here real quick, all right? So one of the guns that I carry frequently, infrequently I should say, I don't carry this much, is a little kel PF9. So kel PF9 used to be about the smallest 9mm on the market, not anymore. Let's lay it right over the top of this guy here, real gently. All right, you see that? So they're lined up here at the butt of the gun. Look at the difference in the muzzle. And also look at the difference in the height. That kel is an extra round, so there it is a seven plus one, not a six plus one. But still, for pocket carry, that length of that grip really makes a difference in pocket carry. And look how short that is. All right, let's try it against another one here. Another really popular gun, Smith & Wesson 642. Very pocketable, very easy to carry, very accurate gun. All right, so let's just line it up here. Roughly, I'm gonna make the uh, butt of the, this Kimber Solo about even with the butt of grip on this, roughly. We'll make it roughly there. Look at the difference in the dimensions there. 
It is just amazing how small this 9mm is. You don't really realize how small it is until you start comparing it with other firearms. Alright, so here's one that just blew me away. Alright, this is a Ruger LCP. Very small. This is very small, very pocketable, easy to carry, very light. But it's a 380. It's not a 9mm. But look what happens when we put it over the top of this Kimber Solo. You see that? There's not a lot of difference there. Kimber Solo's got a little bit more of a, a little more barrel length on it, and just a little bit more height. But we're talking 9mm instead of 380. That is an amazing little gun. So the gun that I carry all the time, my daily carry, is an XDS. This one happens to be in 45 though. This is not the 9mm. So this is this is a apples to oranges type comparison. But just to give you an idea, the XDS 45 compared to the Kimber Solo 9mm. That is just a really small gun. Alright. I'll tell you what, let's take it apart real quick because I want to show you what this barrel looks like on the inside. I'm not going to go through this step by step with you. It does come down just like a 1911. So if you've ever disassembled a 1911, you can disassemble this. It can be a little tricky because that spring in there is really stout. There we go. I'll take out pin. Got to pull the trigger. Slide it apart. All right. Give you a quick look inside the frame. Nothing real special inside there. The uh, frame safety in here kind of got some uh, some roll pins sticking through it there. I'm not sure what those are for. Interesting. All right, this is the real magic of this gun. Check this out. All right, so you have a uh, two-part guide rod. It is a full guide rod, but it actually collapses. All right, you see that? And there's two springs on it. The barrel which by the way is a very tight fit getting out of here there we go check out the contour of that barrel and you'll also know the extra space down here in this lockup lug down here this lug on the bottom of the barrel you can see the extra space the extra clearance in here for that pin that allows the barrel to move and uh, I'll, may, I'll, I'll see if I can remember to show you that when I put it back together that barrel moves a lot inside that frame but only when it's unlocked only when it's at uh, at full recoil all right pretty cool little barrel quick look inside the slide it is dirty yes I'm gonna clean it and take it to the range today maybe tomorrow hopefully today everything goes right I'll have a uh, shooting video for you tomorrow or the next day all right so it also looks like uh, You can also see the initials right there on that front sight. It's kind of jumpy topics here. But it looks like the initials might be uh, MM2, maybe? MH2? Not sure. Cool. Let's put this back together real quick. And it goes back together fairly simple. It's not that hard to put back together. Um, you got to make sure this is aligned because there is a, you know, the ability for it to move in there a little bit. All right, so once we got the barrel and recoil spring back in the slide, let's just slide it right back on the frame. All right, so now all we got to do is put the takedown pin in it. There's one trick to the, to the takedown pin. This uh, takedown pin right here has a hook on the end. That hook is made to catch that spring right there. There's a little spring right in the corner. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. You can see a little shiny thing right there. It's made to catch that. If you don't catch that with that spring, um, with that pin, it won't go back together right. It won't function right afterwards. Alright, just put it down there. I'm going to align these guys up. See if I can hold it in place and do this on camera. There we go. Slide right in place. Plus functionality. Locks back. There we go. That's a quick look at the Kimber Solo Carry 9mm. 
If you got any questions, you can send me an email at muzzlefirst at gmail.com and visit my website www.muzzlefirst.com. There's a link in the top right of this video to subscribe. Thank you and you have a good day.